This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about Gen Art Sapphire 8 plugin collection. Basically, it's a collection of plugins available for Adobe products such as After Effects, Premiere. It's available for Nuke, certain Autodesk products, Avid Media Composer, and a few other host applications. But basically, it's just a collection of plugins similar to Red Giants Universe, Boris FX, and FX Factory's plugin suite or whatever. And basically, I just want to give you guys a quick tour of some of the things in Sapphire 8. I know a lot of you guys haven't really heard of this if you're kind of new to the field. Uh, you know, if you're an avid user or a longtime editor, you've probably heard of Gen Arts' Sapphire 8 collection. It's a very, very essential thing. They go pretty far back, and they're one of the first plugin collections for these kind of applications here. So pretty well known. But this is just to introduce some of the new guys uh, about Sapphire here. So let's go and check it out. I'm going to be comparing a lot of this stuff to Red Giant's Universe. And the reason that is is because I haven't really used Boris FX plugin collection yet. And FX Factory is only Mac. And so I'm not going to compare it to those uh, to that platform there. So let's go and take a look here. By the way, if you want a full in-depth review about Sapphire 8, go ahead and check the link down below for the article where you can read my full in-depth thoughts and opinions over it. This is just going to be a quick overview about what I think about Sapphire 8 here. So first things first, Sapphire 8, how's it different from Red Giant Universe? Uh, first is that we have more utilities per se. So Universe is kind of new. It's only a year old. And so far, we've only really had these nice, fancy stylizing, you know, cool effects here, such as the blurs. We have certain glows. We have some stylizing effects. Basically, they're just to make your footage look pretty. And they have less utility like plugins. So for an example, the utilities tab here, we only have three things here. And of course, this will grow in the future. But for right now, Sapphire has a lot more utility tools that will help you fix issues and help you create certain effects rather than just effects that stylize your renders. For example, we have stuff in the adjustment tab, such as, you know, a lot of channel switcher stuff. You know, you can clamp the chroma channels. We have a gamma tool that will allow you to, you know, lower down the gamma a little bit. We also have some tools that will help you highlight certain things and help you color correct certain things. So for example, we have the S hotspot effects, um, which allows you to highlight the hotspots or the bright areas by adjusting the threshold here. And as you can see, this is very useful for creating, you know, sky replacements, uh, creating mats for certain things, maybe create your own pseudo uh, mats for stuff like depth mats and stuff like that. This is just a nice, easy way to isolate things. And of course, you can do this with curves and, you know, levels and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this is a nicer way of doing it. And you can just blur the, uh, the mat a little bit by five pixels and, you know, change certain things. Again, these are just little tools that make things very, very easy for you and you know provide you a lot more leeway for certain things very quickly unlike universe here so we have you know we have a lot of adjustment stuff we have tint tritone you know certain things threshold show bad colors for broadcast stuff you know very useful things that you're not going to find in universe right now anyways of course we have you know the basics such as the blurs we have a lot of blurs similar to universe these are not any better than universe's blurs um you know they're just kind of the same stuff you know we have the average beauty blur which kind of blur out your skin very similar to red giants cosmo here we have some really cool things uh such as grain remove which will actually remove grain from your footage so that's something that red giant doesn't really have in their universe plugin suite uh, we have some stuff such as rack defocus, which will allow you to do some really nice, uh, I guess, depth of field stuff going on. We have typical sharpen stuff that will sharpen some of your, uh, I guess, your shots here. As you can see, we have a lot of control over everything. We can sharpen individual channels. We can sharpen everything, the luminance, the chroma. We have certain thresholds, so you can just sharpen the edges. Um, you know, there's a lot of controls here compared to a lot of other plugin suites that I've seen such as FX Factory and Universe. And you know, a lot of effects uh, have a lot of controls, I will say, such as, you know, the basic blur, as you can see, just a basic blur effect, but we have tons of controls to mess around with here. We can do a lot of things. We even have, a lot of the effects have these nice little guides, which you can kind of just visually blur things out without tweaking the parameters here. So as you can see, we can also turn this off if you wanted to. Different modes, you know, box blur, triangle blur, you can blur certain directions and stuff like that. Very cool and nice way to just visually interact with your effect this way. So pretty cool. 
So again, lots of controls over even the simplest effects here. We even have an effect called D-Band, which allows you to kind of remove banding. So if you're using a lot of colors, a lot of glows, and you're using eight bits per channel, which you should switch to 16 bits, this will kind of help you kind of remove the banding of your gradients and stuff. So again, another useful utility, something not found in a lot of plugin suites. And apologies for going too fast. I mean, this is just gonna be a quick overview. There's a lot to cover here. The builder I will go over in a second. We have some other stuff like uh, Sapphire Composites. So we have a lot of stuff here to help composite things, uh, help with mass and stuff like that. Again, very useful utilities. I don't really have time in this video to show. The distort has a lot of cool things. We have your typical distortion, distortion blur, which will kind of give you that kind of like a CC vector blur kind of look if you kind of just tweak it the right way. And there's a lot of options as well. Let's see here, what's a really cool effect? We have shake, which will kind of give you that nice uh, shaky look as if you're in an earthquake and uh, kind of like a nice way of just combining a lot of effects together to create kind of like a natural handshake or camera shake kind of animation going on. As you can see, lots of presets for you to use. In fact, Sapphire has, I believe over a thousand presets for all their effects here. So. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, we have some, a lot of controls. Amplitude, frequency, the phase, the drift, the uh, cropping controls, and, you know, direction controls for the shake. You know, just tons and tons of controls here. Let's go into, let's see, you know, there's a lot of distortion stuff. We have lighting. Now, lighting, lighting, render, and stylize are probably my three favorite tabs of Sapphire. There's just so many controls. Um, we have stuff such as, let's see here, we have the typical glow which is, uh, you know, as you can see, again, lots of effects here, lots of controls and parameters. We get that nice kind of chroma glow like Red Giant's universe. You know, we can control the width and height individually. We can affect the alpha. We can do a lot of things here, light background if we wanted to, you know, certain things like this, change the color, increase the brightness a little bit. So in your, your typical glow, uh, let's see here. We have a lot of other things going on. Our, lighting, we have certain things like lens flare. Yes, Sapphire 8 has its own lens flare. Actually, it goes kind of way back, but uh, uh, Sapphire does have lens flares. And as you can see, it's, I'd say it's pretty fast, pretty rapid. Again, you have a lot of controls. You have a preset builder, so we can go to edit lens. It's going to start the flare designer here. And you get, a, you get an interface kind of like optical flares. You can add elements to it. We can adjust the colors of things. Uh, we can go in here and change the brightness, position, scale. So let's just increase the size of this. We can go ahead and change the color from red to maybe like a blue color or something. Hit OK and add certain elements in. Of course, this is not as, you know, as fancy as optical flares, but it definitely is close to optical flares. And you get some pretty nice results if you actually put in some effort to create some flares here. And again, there's tons of presets for these. So, you know, if you don't want to build it, that's OK. I'm gonna hit cancel, but as you can see, we get this nice uh, 2D slash 3D lens flare. So you're kind of getting optical flares combined with it. I wouldn't compare this to optical flares. I would say this is kind of like an improved version of no light factory. So pretty cool that you get this bundled in with Sapphire here. With some things such as some light rays or edge rays. Let's go ahead and use the S rays here. It's a little bit cooler. And uh, this is just kind of like shine, trap code shine. So if I go ahead and increase the brightness a little bit, you can see that if I just kind of play around with the threshold and length, you can get some pretty interesting things here, just like this. So as you can see, we get some nice burst rays. In fact, this has more control than trap code shine itself. So, you know, you can save some money by not purchasing optical flares, not purchasing, uh, I guess, trap code shine. You kind of have all that built in within Sapphire here with a little bit more control, in my opinion here. So as you can see, they have a lot of things covered under their belt here. So I'm going to move on to the render tab. The render tab, you have some cool things such as you can generate grids, very similar to uh, Red Giant's grid. Let's see here, we have render. Uh, we have some cool muzzle flashes. So if you were, uh, if you don't want to purchase any stock footage for muzzle flashes, you have this 3D muzzle flash, and this kind of reminds me of Hit Films, 
uh, effects here where you have an interactive 3D muzzle flash. And this can be very, very useful if you were to create some kind of action film. Of course, you're gonna increase the radius a little bit, maybe decrease it, maybe increase the brightness. You know, you can change the color individually. Again, lots of controls. And this can be very cool if you tweak it around a little bit. And again, you get this cool interactive 3D control going on here. There's some other things. We have a really cool, I guess, lightning plugin. This is, looks a lot cooler than the default lightning. You can bend it certain ways with your 3D controls here. You can twist it. And you have more control uh, compared to the lightning effect. And you can get some nicer results, in my opinion, here. And you can just kind of link things together and create these cool, interesting looks. Uh, we can, you know, make them more wrinkly here and do some really cool effects here. So, you know, that's the render tab. Stylize, you have a lot of things such as you can add grain, you can add, uh, you know, certain cool effects like the mosaic effect will kind of give you that censored look here. Now, new to Sapphire 8, we have something called Digital Damage. And this one is pretty cool. This one is kind of like a uh, Red Giant's glitch effect or Hollow Matrix effect. It allows you to create some really cool, nice artifact, digital glitching. And of course, just like Red Giant's universe, you can disable certain things, such as maybe we can remove the pixelation or remove the block noise or maybe, you know, whatever you want and adjust them individually. And as you can see, we have control over every aspect of this. You can tweak it to your likes. And this definitely has more control over the Red Giants universe uh, glitch effect here. So of course, as you can see, lots of controls here for you to play around with. And of course we have the typical cartoon look here, which will kind of make your stuff look like cartoony a little bit, uh, very similar to the tuna effect. And I believe it works a little bit faster in my opinion with the S cartoon effect. And of course you can tweak around with it, play around with the shading, suppress the small edges a little bit and create some cartoony looks using this effect. So as you can see, you're getting a lot of stuff with Sapphire. Under the time, you can get some pretty cool stuff. We have motion detect, which will kind of trace or highlight the motion of things going on. And this can be useful for mats or motion blur and stuff like that. As you can see, Really useful utilities here. We can uh, add flicker. We can actually remove flicker. So again, a very handy utility. You can even add motion blur on here. Uh, you, know, you can displace time, very similar to the time displacement effect within After Effects, but with more control. And we have finally the transitions. Tons and tons of transitions. And personally, I never use transitions anyways, at least from any pack that I've seen, such as Universe or Sapphire. But um, you know, there are tons of them if you want to take a look at them. So as you can see, there's a lot of effects here, but what's really, really neat about Sapphire is the builder. So S effect and, and S transition are very, very similar. They essentially allow you to build things, customize it, and use them as individual presets or effects. So I'm just gonna show you S effect here, which is the effect builder. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit effect, and it's going to, start the effect builder. And here we have a very, very interesting interface. So basically you have a node based system, which allows you to have a lot of control over how you design your plugin here. So let's say we wanted to add a blur. We can go ahead and add a blur to our scene and we'll connect the source to the blur and then connect the blur to the results. And so now we have a blur effect. And of course we can maybe lower it down a little bit, maybe keep it like that. And let's say we wanted to maybe add some distortion. So we'll distort, add a distort in here, and you know we'll connect the blur to the distort. So it's gonna blur first and then distort, and then we'll get back to our results. So of course we can go in here, we can tone down the amount, something like that, maybe Messing around with this, and I have really no idea what I'm doing here. We're just playing around. And let's go ahead and pick a lighting one. We'll just add a glow. So as you can see, automatically kind of just links in for us, which is pretty nice. Maybe take it down a little bit. Something like that. So as you can see, we created some a nice little effect stack here. And lastly, I'm just gonna create a render. Maybe we'll add 
a stylized one last thing we'll just add the digital damage just for the heck of it so as you can see we started with our source our source is the layer that we applied the effect to our custom effect and we'll add a blur add a distort add a glow add a digital damage and now we have a result and of course you can tweak certain things if you wanted to and do some pretty cool things once you're happy with that you can go ahead and hit ok or you can save your effect as its own effect and once you do that you can essentially apply the effect whenever you want, whenever you want, by hitting the load preset. And as you can see, it combined all of our effects together to create one master effect with all the controls that you wanted uh, for this particular effect here. So this is very cool. This opens a lot of possibilities for what you can do with Sapphire 8. And as you can see, it's kind of like having the supernova builder for universe within After Effects using a node-based system. So basically you can create whatever effect you want using a combination of Sapphire effects all within one single effect. And this is very, very cool. This opens a lot of possibilities for what you can do and you know, kind of the order that you do it in. So that's just a pretty crappy demonstration of an effect that you can create, but the process is the same nevertheless and you can create some pretty powerful customized effects within Sapphire 8. And the transition builder works kind of in the same way. You create your own transitions. I don't use transitions and I don't want to waste your time talking about the transition builder here in this video. So before I continue, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the number one place to build your website, whether you're creating an online store, portfolio, or business. Squarespace is the place to be. They have tons of beautiful design templates available for you to use, customizable, ready for mobile, very, very well professionally designed. They have a lot of features to help you set up your store, your business, or your online portfolio. They have great support. And best of all, Squarespace is very, very affordable, starting at just $8 a month. Also, if you go to squarespace.com slash dojo and use the promo code dojo at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo as well. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo, the best place to create your own website, Squarespace. That is basically a very basic summary of Sapphire 8. Again, in my opinion, I think this, this is a very, very excellent effect pack. You know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. On the front, it just seems like you're paying for another plugin package similar to Universe, similar to Boris. But in this suite, um, you know, you're getting a lot of tools. You're getting tools to remove flicker, to remove banding, to add motion blur. So it kind of replaces real smart motion blur. You're adding a camera lens blur effect. So you can kind of replace fish lift. You're getting a lens flare pack which you can kind of replace no light factory, not really optical flares, but kind of a no light factory. You're getting a kind of like a mojo replacement. You're getting a light leads effect. You're getting a lot of utilities. You get an S rays effect, which replaces trap coat shine. Basically, you're getting a lot of things in this package beyond what Red Giant Universe offers, beyond what FX Factory offers in their Mac only platform, which no one uses. Um, so, you know, overall, you're getting a really, really great deal. Not only are you getting a lot of stylized effects, such as things that make your, your, you know, your animations look prettier, you're also getting a lot of useful tools and things that you'll actually use to help fix certain issues, which is something that I appreciate the most using Sapphire. It's not just a fancy pack of you know, you know, new skins or whatever. It's actually a very handy, useful suite of plugins. So to talk about the pricing, Gen Arts products have kind of been known to be very, very expensive. The traditional legacy box version of Sapphire originally cost $1,699. And that's for your typical box version. You get one year of support and updates and that's how much it costs. And if you wanted to renew your license or get future updates, you gotta pay an additional $450 a year for continuous updates. And this is kind of getting very, very expensive. So Genars decided to move to a subscription plan or actually create a new subscription plan on top of their regular box version, which I think is a lot better and a lot cheaper for most individual designers here. So the subscription plan is only available for Adobe host products such as After Effects or Premiere, but you can pay $149 for every three months for the Sapphire 8 collection or you can pay $499 for the whole year. And of course, if you keep on paying, this includes future updates and you know support and stuff like that. So this is definitely a more affordable route for individual freelancers. Um, you know, Sapphire has been used in studios and broadcast you know, production companies for the longest time. And it hasn't really been available for individual freelancers because it's so, it's so expensive. But now with this plan, it's a lot more affordable, which is why I'm talking about it today. If it was like $2,000, I probably wouldn't be talking about it. 
but now that's more affordable, it's worth noting. So we should keep in mind that Universe actually costs $399 for a lifetime license. This includes future updates forever. Um, so how does this compare? You know, you're paying $399 for Universe for a lifetime license, or you're paying, you know, $499 a year for as long as you want to keep the plugin suite active and updated. Um, so, you know, it really just depends on what your budget is as well as your kind of work. Of course, Red Giant Universe is more affordable for a lot of people. It all comes down to how serious of a freelancer you are. If you are more of a serious freelancer, then definitely Sapphire 8 is a better investment because you get a lot more utilities and tools to help you out, such as the trap code shine replacement, you know, the optical flares, the mojo, the reduction of noise, banding, all that stuff. You're getting a lot of stuff within one package compared to Red Giant, where right now it's mostly just stylized effects to make your your motion graphics look a little bit cooler. Uh, Sapphire has more utilities and tools that actually help you, which is why I think it's a little bit better investment. They've been going on for a long time. They have great support. You know, they have a long history of creating plugins and um, you know, that's not going anywhere, anywhere anytime soon. And yes, Red Giant will definitely improve in the future. It would definitely have more facts, more parameters, more controls, more polished feel. But of course, Sapphire is only gonna get better. So definitely, if you have the money, Sapphire A is definitely a good investment. And it's definitely the best suite I've used so far. Um, but you know, Red Giant Universe is also really, really good as well for its price. You know, it's pretty up there for being only one year old and uh, it's pretty affordable. So both options are pretty well. But if you're more of a serious designer, definitely go with Sapphire 8. If you're just kind of the motion graphics guy that does it for a hobby, definitely Universe is probably a better route for you. So this is just a quick overview of Sapphire 8. If you want a full in-depth review, check out my review down below at thecreativedojo.net. This has just been a quick one. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.